Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a behind the scenes breakdown of this commercial that I shot for a local bakery. Check it out. I think that was pretty good. So this was actually a spec piece that some friends and I got together and made for a local bakery called Last Call Baking. I'm gonna break this video down by pre-production, production, and post-production, just to keep it concise and hopefully give you some value on how we came together and made this happen in general and also without a budget because it was a spec piece. If you do like this video, if you feel like it was valuable to you in any way, please hit the like button down below. And without further ado, Let's get started. Pre-production. I was brought onto this as a DP by my friend Eliza. She's working on building out her directing reel and thought up this idea for Last Call Baking. She's actually close friends with Hana, the owner and the talent in this video. So I met up with Eliza and we went over the storyboard that she had already drawn out in her notebook, which I thought was dope. And I was pretty immediately like, yes, I wanna do this. I wanna work on this because Last Call is a part of a community in Birmingham that I feel a part of. It's next door to the coffee shop I go to every day. I see the same people in and out of there and in and out of the coffee shop. I don't know, it's just a cool little community. The next step for pre-pro was to build out the crew. Like I mentioned, this is a spec commercial, so we didn't have money to pay anybody, but thankfully, we have a lot of really cool, talented friends. So of course, Eliza was the director. I was the director of photography. Then we brought on Madison to be the first AD and the producer. My boy Alex Kiker to be my first AC. We had Kinsley doing any art department and set design duties and then Tucker operating as a grip, a swing. We also had Marina as a production assistant and a massive shout out to Aaron at Air7 Media for letting me use his red Komodo kit and his DZO lenses. We also rented a Dana Dolly from Seth at Ala Gripco, so Seth, Thank you for letting us use that. So after we figured out the crew, I needed to tend to my DP duties, like finishing the storyboard and the shot list based on Eliza's direction. The first thing we did was pick a day to go into Last Call and do a location scout, get some photos. You can see here, I was just trying to get as many angles as I could, visualize where the light was coming in. You can see they have massive windows at the front, these three massive windows on the side. So I wasn't really worried about lighting too terribly much. I knew that the natural light would do a lot for us. Now seems like a good time to mention that our commercial was heavily inspired by this piece called Gigi's Little Kitchen, which was shot fully on 16 millimeter film. I'll link it in the description. It's beautiful, it's textured, it's just wonderful. You should definitely go watch it. So armed with this piece, the location scout photos and director's notes from Eliza, I sat down and started going through frame set and shot deck and my brain, I guess, to finish out the shot list and the storyboard and really figure out what we wanted to capture on the day. At points, I would save some of these stills and compile them into a mood board, send them over to Eliza and see what she thought. Another thing I was trying to pay attention to during this pre-pro process was color and set design. I wanted to make sure that we had some color separation on set. You can see in the location, there's a lot of muted colors and pastel colors. So I wanted to make sure that whatever Hana was wearing or whatever bowls or utensils we were using, we're gonna create some kind of separation for us. But that brings us into part two, the production. So we had from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. to do this commercial, not a full production day, definitely a little bit of a squeeze. But thankfully we were armed with our pre-production docs and our plucky attitudes, so, we got it done. So we showed up around 10.30, unloaded the gear, and I started talking through the shots with Eliza and Madison, looking at where the light was, looking at different frames through my camera, and getting all the gear set up. 
And overall, it was a pretty smooth production day. We were definitely moving quick. We did not take a lunch break. We didn't really take any breaks. We were trying to make sure that we were gonna get all the shots that we needed before the end of the day. We focused pretty heavily on our shot list. There were a good amount of times that maybe what we initially thought up wasn't gonna work or wasn't the best idea. Someone on set would have a good idea. I know Alex, as my AC, brought a lot of great creative ideas to the table, and I love that to a certain extent, especially when you're on a paid job, you know, maybe there's not always time for that, but I love having a shot list and having good pre-pro done and then getting to be creative in the space and collaborate with the people around you, but especially on a spec shoot. Another thing I really loved about this project, and this is a big reason to do spec pieces, I really got to operate as a DP this time. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing, I'm producing, shooting, directing, doing everything, or I'm just assisting or operating as a first AC, pulling focus, building cameras. But on this day, I got to really fill that DP role and come alongside Eliza, my director. I distinctly remember telling myself before going in, this is not your piece, it does not belong to you. You've been brought on to this to bring your visual language, but your goal today is to make your director's vision come to life. And it was really fun to do that. Obviously we had our shot list and our storyboards, we figured out and collaborated in that way a lot before the shoot day. But even on the day, there would be things that maybe Eliza wasn't super pleased with that she was seeing on the monitor. So I was able to come in and be like, hmm, what about this? What about this? Yes. And then we would go for it. I do really wish we could have had a full G&E team there helping with lighting. Again, the natural light in here was incredible. And we would pop up some aperture lights to kind of give some rim light or some fill here and there. But for the most part, this was all natural lighting in the space. Let's look at this shot right here. Like I said, this piece was heavily inspired by the Gigi's Little Kitchen piece, so much that there were some shots that we wanted to kind of recreate one for one. And this egg yolk shot was one of them. So we did this just using a piece of cutout glass. The struggles we faced here were finding a good tilt on the glass to where we weren't getting weird reflections and light everywhere. And that would also not make the egg yolk slide off like it was at a super steep angle. We ended up finding that good balance and we had Tucker and Kinsley just holding this piece of glass for the most part. Maybe we leaned it up against some stands. I don't really remember. I absolutely loved this frame. I don't think it was necessarily in the shot list because I don't remember planning to have this much butter like, look at how much butter this is. It was very dope to get all that butter on the table, and my brain was so happy at the rich, vibrant orange color that the packaging was. And I was like, yes, stack up all the butter. Let's get the butter. I really love this last sequence because this is just the crew from the day taking big old honking bites of pastries at like 14 millimeters right in front of the lens. It just kind of speaks to the spec work of it all. We don't have talent. We didn't get talent in that day. <laughs> so we just had to use who was available. And I love being able to watch that because every time I watch it back, I'm gonna remember like the homies made it happen. A specific shout out to Hana, the owner of Last Call, because they're not a production person, but they gave away their entire day. I think we ended up going over an hour and we were going. And they were the one having to do like the hard work, doing the baking, rolling the dough out, making the croissant. So Hana, thank you. That was really dope of you to let us do this at all. <laughs> With all that said, let's move on to part three, the post-production. So I actually did not edit this piece. Eliza's brother, Elliot, was the editor on this one. And I'm not gonna lie to you, after we got done shooting that day, in my head I was like, oh, I really like this footage. I was really proud of the way it looked and I was nervous to hand it off to someone else. So when Eliza sent me the link to Elliot's edit, I was just a little bit nervous to see what had happened to my footage. And when I opened it and watched it, I was completely blown away. It was so good, so dope. I loved everything that Elliot did. And I think the thing I loved the most about it was he made a lot of decisions that I wouldn't have made. He used some digital zooms and digital camera shakes. He even used some transitions in posts, which I used to use them way too much, so I stopped using them. But watching them in this piece, I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's a freaking great place to put that. And again, the digital zooms and the camera shake combined with the music that he chose really brings like a, a 90s grunge, almost skater video feel to the piece. But yes, the edit was incredible, so that takes us on to the color grade. I was really happy to get to do the color on this one because like I mentioned earlier, the inspiration for this piece was shot on Kodak Vision 3 500T 
16 millimeter film and I was ready to emulate some film. I got the piece into DaVinci and used Dehancer and some other color grading tools to really get the look that I was going for. I didn't want to be too married to what the Gigi's Little Kitchen video looked like. I wanted the identity of the Vision 3 500T film in there, but I didn't want to be like, okay, all the color temperatures have to be the same because they're different locations, they're different times of day. And I'm not going to do a full breakdown of the color grade and all the nodes I used here, but I actually already made that video. So if you do want to see a full breakdown of the color that I used on this piece, you can check it out up here, whichever side those things pop up on. And that brings us to releasing the video. So this was actually a pretty long process due to, again, it being a spec piece. After we shot, the editing took a while because people have jobs to do that are paying them money. And after the editing was done, the coloring took way too long because again, I had jobs I needed to focus on. But the cool thing was when I finally did get it done, it happened to be the week of Last Call's first birthday. So it made me really happy to be a part of giving this to Hana on Last Call's first birthday and being like, here. And they posted it on their first birthday and the entire community kind of loved it, which was very cool. I didn't need that to happen. I didn't need people to love it and I didn't need people to like it besides Hana. I wanted them to like it because it's their business, but it felt really good to make something that the community that I'm a part of was like, hey, pretty sick. But y'all, that was a lot. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions about the pre-production, the actual shoot, or anything we did in post, please drop them down below. If you're interested in the in-depth color grading, definitely go watch that video. And y'all, I think that's all I have for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.